what does that mean? Yeah. Why was that included in a child's movie? Mm -hmm. Hi, friends. Welcome to the first ever episode of Movie Night with the Youngs. It is our premiere episode. We are so happy that you could be here with us. Um, we are a mom and pop podcast, so we are learning as we go, but we're hopefully <laughs> going to have some good fun here today. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Brittany. And I'm Nicole. And if you can't tell by our faces, our last names, which is Young, or the name of our podcast, we're sisters. Um, and we decided that we wanted to go ahead and do something fun together and came up with this idea of having a podcast where we go back over the movies of our childhood and try to figure out how they affect us as adults, um, what makes us ponder and question our childhood, basically, and did our parents make a mistake with letting us watch these movies. Um, we are millennials. <laughs> we are millennials. So movies that we'll be watching will be from the 80s, the 90s, a little bit of the early 2000s, maybe a little bit of the late 70s. But we hope that you guys will go ahead and watch the movies with us. Um, yeah, Nicole. Yes. And we actually grew up in Japan where there were very rare any English movies, TV shows on TV. I mean, I can remember Blossom and Doobie wow. Hauser. Yeah. were probably the only shows on TV um, that we watched. So we had an extensive movie collection. Um, I'd say a pretty big movie collection that we would watch movies all day long, every day. Yeah. Our dad... <laughs> Our dad's a movie buff. He may not say he's a movie buff, but he's a movie buff. Yes, um, yes. And that trickled down to us. So here we are. Like I said, we're going to go back over the movies of our childhood and try to figure out, yeah, what we think about them now as adults. Um, what we're also going to do every month, we are going to have kind of a theme of the podcast. So this is our first month. Woo! Um, Woo we are going to start with sports movies. I feel like there should have been a music cue there, like dun, 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 mm -hmm. sports yep. movies. I agree. <laughs> it's again, mom and pop podcast. <laughs> We're beginners. Um, yeah. Come back episode 100. We'll have some music mm -hmm. cues for you guys. Um, but yeah, so we are going to start with sports movies that we watched as a kid. We are daughters of a football, basketball, baseball coach. So sports movies were pretty big in our household. Uh, one sports movie that we watched all the time. <laughs> All the time we can quote this movie, y'all, not even kidding, um, is The Sandlot, a movie that came out in 1993, directed by David Mikey Evans, starring Tom Geary, Mike Vitar, Patrick Reyna, who I've actually worked with on Glow. What a sweet, sweet man. We love you, Patrick, if you're out there listening. Yes, uh, we love you. We love you. Dennis Leary, Karen Allen, and the goat, James <laughs> Earl Jones, <laughs> Darth Vader himself. Um <laughs> If you lovely have voice. voice. Lovely voice. He should be on our podcast. He should be. Um, if you guys, you know, this is the first episode. So what we hope, we'll tell you which movie we're watching every week and hoping that you guys go and take the week to watch the movie and then come back with us and tell us your thoughts in the comments and, you know, what you reacted to now that you're an adult. Um, but we will go ahead and give you a little bit synopsis of what the movie is. So if you have not seen The Sandlot, uh, get on it. But it is a movie um, that takes place in the summer of 1962. And Scott Smalls, who is played by Tom Geary, has just moved into a new neighborhood. And he becomes friends with the local baseball prodigy, Benny the Jet Rodriguez, played by Mike Vitar, and basically becomes friends with him and his friends who all they do in the summer is just play baseball in this ragtag, dirty, dusty baseball diamond <laughs> that is the Sandlot um, and has the best summer of their lives. Uh, that is literally how the movie opens is a voiceover of an older small saying he has, you know, being with Benny the Jet was the best summer of his life. So to start off today, Nicole, that is my first question. Do you think you ever had a summer that was considered the best summer of your life? Ooh, that's a hard question. I feel like we've had a lot of summers that were our <laughs> best summers of our life. Well, that comes with age that you yes. have a lot of summers. Yes. <laughs> However, um, I think this movie is so relatable in that our summers were full of us being outside, meeting with our friends, going to play sports going to the parks or doing whatever we decided to do for that day. Um, those were definitely the best summers. They were 
they were carefree. We didn't have to worry about anything. School's out. Um, we meet each other in the morning and then we spend the entire day together and we don't come home until, you know, the streetlights go off. Yeah. Which growing up in Alaska is kind of the beauty of it. Oh, we also grew up in Alaska as well. In addition to Japan, <laughs> yeah. but like, it's the beauty of it. Like the sun in the summer never goes down. Yes. Yep. Um, I would agree. I mean, I remember playing kickball in the middle of our street with all of our neighbors mm-hmm. Yep. In Japan, I remember riding our bikes, taking the train. Again, our parents just too much trust in us as little kids. It, it was different times. You <laughs> you let your kids go out by themselves and didn't worry about it. And I, today's society is definitely very different. <laughs> very different. But that you do bring up a good point, which is kind of my next question about this. At the beginning of this movie, we do see that Smalls doesn't really have any friends. He is new to mm-hmm. the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And there's this one moment with his mom at night where he's playing with, um, I think it's be- it's before our time. We weren't really into him, but Erector sets. Mm-hmm. And she kind of comes in and she's just like, Smalls, you have to get out of the house. And I think at the time, younger when I was watching that, I was like, oh, yeah, you got to get out of the house. Like, you can't play with your toys all day, Smalls. Now watching it, I'm like, the generation now has to get out of the house because they're on technology. Like it's like Mm -hmm. every generation has something that they're stuck in the house doing like the radio TV, their phones. Um, I'm hoping kids are getting out, getting out now. That's what we hope. I, I don't think so much as we did. (laughs) I feel like that scene definitely um, was a classic scene, but I don't think us growing up struggled without, like we were very active. We were outside a lot. Yeah. Um, like you said, kids nowadays, they, they're on their phones, PlayStation, and even when they hang out together, they're still on their phones. Yeah. They're not, they're true. less active, I think, than yeah. we were. So, sorry to all the kids who are going to say in the comments, you don't know yeah. us. It's yeah. fine. Um, but yeah, that, that scene to me, especially, you know, when he hits his mom in the head with that marble, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> you need to go outside, buddy. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it's, you know, the opening of this movie is just really getting him into meeting these boys that go every day to the Sandlot. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting. I don't remember making friends. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I know I made friends because I have friends, but I don't remember the process of making friends. But what I loved about this was that literally one day Smalls decides to just show up at the Sandlot and just stand in the bushes, Mm -hmm. like hoping the ball would come his way. Yes. Um, he followed it, them to the Sandlot one day. Yeah. And then he just like stands there hoping that they'll interact with him. And mm-hmm. I thought that that was really very funny and also very brave. Mm-hmm. And you feel bad for him. Like you just want him yeah. to to make new friends and get involved with the game. Um, I think us too, we, we were in one place for a long time. So our friends mm-hmm. came from like our school. So it was automatically all our friends from school during the summer. We are we hung out together all the time. So there really wasn't an instance where we were new until we moved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like you said, that trying to make friends was a little bit new to us, but you, you feel for his character for sure. You just, you just want them to talk to him and, and yeah. take them, you know, take him under their wing. Yeah. And they're all kind of like mean at the beginning, like when he throws the ball yeah. <laughs> and they're just like laughing and I'm like, how did you even show up? the next time yeah, you know they, they were definitely nice. bullies i feel like yeah or they were just a really tight click mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know they were like we've all because they even say it later in the voiceover towards the end where it's like <laughs> they all kind of moved over the years after this summer but they never replaced anybody on the team it mm-hmm. was like once small came and made nine because that's how many members you need on a baseball team i looked it up <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> once smalls came they never replaced people so it was really like a very um tight click mm-hmm. i think for me too like i don't know if you caught on to it i'm really questioning where is this field <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, like it's just in the middle of a random neighborhood it does but it's also like nobody takes care of it like literally smalls is in these like bramley mm-hmm. dead bushes out in center field or center right no, left center is where mm-hmm. Benny tells him to go play. And he's like up against like a dead tree, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was very interesting. But I know, like speaking of the field, they there's a lot of scenes in this movie in the treehouse, which I feel like a treehouse is a huge trope of like kids movies mm-hmm. in the 90s. Like if your friends had a treehouse, y'all were killing it. Yep. 
you know. <laughs> but for me now, as an adult watching it, whose tree's house is it? Yeah, that's true. Like it looks like a random one that they go to whenever they have sleepovers. But that's the thing. It does in the beginning. And then in the scene later in the movie where they're trying to get the ball back that went over the fence, which we'll talk later as the you know movie progresses. Mm -hmm. They're like in somebody's backyard and that's where the treehouse is. Mm -hmm. It has so to be like, someone's treehouse. Like one of theirs. It has but they to never be. say it. Is it Tommy sure. and Timmy? Timmy it could and be. Tommy? It could be. It's someone's. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't see them randomly hopping fences. And going no. into tree houses. No, but they have a lot of stuff in the tree. I mean, like, it's fully decked out. Like, there's mm -hmm. bowling pins in there and mm -hmm. bunks. Yep. I mean, it was a pretty legitimate tree house. But, yeah, because that also makes me wonder. Again, like, the the main adventure kind of in this story is that at some point they do lose a ball over the fence and they have to get it back. Um, But if this is one of their homes, isn't that their next door neighbor? Why not just knock on the door and ask for your ball back very true but then there'd be no movie true Plus, kids love adventure i think if this were to happen to us when we were kids <laughs> we wouldn't have asked the neighbor to get the ball back i don't <laughs> know pick the person out of our group to go hop that fence and get it <laughs> yeah and then that when that didn't happen we'd probably pick the next person and be like just go get the ask ring the doorbell yeah possibly possibly but there was do you remember our next door neighbor that did have the dog next to us through the fence very similar our next door neighbor with the dog yeah. through the fence yeah next door neighbor had a dog they had like that wire fence right there and the dog was always there always chained like a very similar oh yeah and we lost our ball over that a few times and we always hopped it though yeah but we That's knew that true. dog was friendly. <laughs> That's true. I mean, literally, they are going up against a dog called the Beast in yeah. the Sandlot. So that's true. that's a little bit different. Um, yeah, I just – it was one of those things where I was like, why didn't they yeah. just ask? Yeah, it would have been easier, but this was more fun. True. And you are right. I mean, it is now the logic of it. If you just ask for your ball back, it's a short film, not a feature film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Movie's over yes. at that point. Um, Plus, I mean, and to now, I wouldn't recommend kids just hopping people's fences into the backyards. But Oh, that's very true. I, it was Be innocent. Safe. It was innocent yeah. during our times. Be safe, kids. And it wasn't like a huge fence. True. Like if we could hop it, it wasn't that large. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or we just need a little assistance back over. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, one of the things, you know, mm. I love about this movie, too, is that, like, there's a lot of scenes where they play baseball. It is a baseball mm -hmm. movie. That is the sport of this movie. Um, and I just love watching, again, like, they don't ever really play a game because it's only one team. There's only nine players. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're just playing against themselves, but it's almost like Benny is running drills. Yeah. Like yep. it's almost like a practice that they have. Mm -hmm. um, well, and the other thing too, is I feel like no one else bats. No, they show Benny all the time. He's the only one. Yeah. No, they, sh they show Benny batty, which, but then they say that he rotates the positions. He's like, Oh, do they show that though? They don't show that. And the funniest thing about it too, is what I realized this time around. There's a sequence where basically Benny hits the ball, Yaya grounds it, he throws it to second at Bertram, Bertram mm -hmm. throws it to first to Tommy or Timmy, they never say which one is which, one of the brothers, and then Tommy or Timmy throws it into home base at Ham. Mm -hmm. And it's the same sequence over and over mm -hmm. from different angles, <laughs> which as a kid, obviously didn't notice, but now like... I went to film school. I am an actor now. And I'm just like, oh, that's the same sequence over and over again yeah. from like three different angles. Yeah. And see, I didn't, I watching it this time around, I didn't even notice that. Oh, I, I was like, what, why, why is that happening? Um, but again, you know, like I said, like I was on a sports show, we had to wrestle and it's hard to get those things going. You know, mm -hmm. like you get the shot that works and especially with kids. I mean, these guys probably didn't know how to play baseball before or maybe they did they got what looked good and they got what looked clean yeah 
Yeah. Um, but the one thing I think is really funny is that in the sequence where they first lose the ball over the fence, and that's when they tell Smalls the story of the beast, mm-hmm. Ham's up to bat and he calls out his shot. Mm-hmm. And I know so many people who call out their shot and they're like, Sandlot, ha 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 ha. But I'm like, oh, but that's actually them paying homage to Babe Ruth. Uh Like, that's something that's interesting, how effective this movie was on our generation, that we don't associate calling out the shot with Babe Ruth. We Uh associate it with Hamilton Porter from The Sandlot. Yep. Yep. I agree. That is, yeah, now that you say that, that is very interesting. Um, Because me not being a huge actual baseball fan, it's not one of the sports that I you know, truly enjoy, watch all the time. Um, I associate that with Sandlot too. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's just one of those things where, again, too, like there's so many from the 90s, so many sports movies that came out. Well, yeah, you're right. There aren't really sports movies that like, in my mind, I'm thinking like Mighty Ducks, Big Green, soccer, hockey. I'm not mm-hmm. a huge fan of those sports, but yeah. I love those movies. Yep. It's because they're they're relatable. It's all your friends getting together, having fun, playing a sport, and then they have little adventures while they're while they're playing that game. Yeah. Not to mention a point too is these kids, they mentioned in the movie, you know, that they're up at eight, nine o'clock in the morning in the summer meeting each other. <laughs> <laughs> Which now that I think back, I I do remember that. Like you yeah. when we were little, we didn't sleep in in the summer. We were up. We're like, okay, what are we going to do today? Let's, you know, let's go meet at the park or, or whatever. We we never slept in, or at least actually, at least the elementary age. Once you get yeah. to like middle high school, then okay, we're sleeping in. Yeah, but, middle high school, you never woke up. Like <laughs> exactly. You're like, oh, it's lunchtime. That's when I will wake up. Yeah. Um. No, that is true. You are definitely <laughs> out there all day mm-hmm. from like the very beginning mm-hmm. into yeah. The late night. You're right. Yeah. Um, that and they didn't even like it was just an automatic schedule. They knew every single day. OK, tomorrow we're going to go meet at the Sandlot at nine and we're going to play. There's no like discussing. Oh, what are we going to do tomorrow? It's it's automatic every day, all day. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have a wide array of hobbies <laughs> for young <laughs> boys of that age. They just really just wanted to play baseball. Yeah. Yeah. But they're friends. They just want to be together. Yeah. No matter what they're doing. So, And it it looked really hot in that movie. Okay. So I looked up a little bit about <laughs> The Sandlot. And I read several. Okay. Anything we say on this podcast, please fact check us. Because I don't want to be trying to like put out false information. But I think this is true. They were saying that they did shoot this in the summer. Mm-hmm. And that some days it got up to like 110 degrees. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, just standing in 110 degrees is hard, but to be out there playing baseball Mm -hmm. in 110 degrees in a dusty, sandy, bramble field. (laughs) (laughs) I believe that, though. You could you could see it. There's some scenes you can tell. But that's again, they're kids. You're going to play through the heat. And I think that we did the same thing, too. Yeah. Growing up in like the severe humidity where you just step outside and you start sweating. But we really didn't care. We still rode our bikes, played, and were dripping in sweat, you know, by the end of the day. Yeah. Like that didn't even phase us. But now we're probably like, oh no, let's let's wait till the sun goes down and then we'll do something. <laughs> yeah. Like don't yeah. even open the shades because that mm-hmm. lets in heat into your home. Mm-hmm. Like you're right. I mean, I don't know. I've always been a sweater. So <laughs> That's, that's unfortunate yeah that's <laughs> it's not my best it's not my best trait um but yeah so like after specifically after uh the scene where ham calls his shot mm-hmm. that's when the ball goes over a ball goes over the fence and smalls tries to go and climb and get it and he's like guys i got it i got it don't worry about it and then the boys all turn when he's climbing the fence and they're like no and they pull him down and he's just like, what's wrong? Like, I'll just get the ball. Thinking mm-hmm. Nicole and Brittany Young style, we'll just hop over and get the ball. And yep. then they say, like, you can't go over there, Smalls. Like, the beast is back there. Yeah. He's like, well, what's the beast? And they're like, okay, well, we'll tell you what the beast is. At our camp out. Mm-hmm. In whoever's treehouse it is. <laughs> um, 
still don't know the owner. Um, but probably one of the most iconic scenes in this movie for mm-hmm. sure, but also in nineties sports films slash kids films period is the marshmallow speech. Yep. I agree. <sighs> yep. Ham Porter. Oh, also he, too, the, probably he... I was just going to say, we'll probably just say everybody's character names. So we yeah. just don't get confused. Yeah. Um, Ham Porter with the best speech ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About how to make s'mores. <laughs> And then I feel like when he's describing how to make s'mores, you just feel sad for Smalls. Oh, like that how, he doesn't how know what can, a s'more is? Yeah, like how can you go through, you know, your childhood and not know what a s'more is? It just it breaks yeah. my heart. <laughs> it breaks my heart too, but it also is something that I find very interesting because of course, American kids, s'mores is part of our summer culture, our camping mm-hmm. culture, Boy Scout, Girl Scouts, fire, s'mores. My fiance is Irish from ireland and when i was with his family one summer i was like guys let's make s'mores no idea what those were Hmm. couldn't even find graham crackers marshmallows really could barely find those either and i was like wow like it is interesting to think of something that you thought was a universal childhood thing is kind of more of a regional thing it's an american Mm -hmm. childhood thing not a childhood Mm -hmm. thing yeah yeah so do they have anything that's similar to that? Oh, I mean, they had. <laughs> <laughs> Could you makeshift a s'more? Uh, we did, but I'm trying to remember what I used for the graham cracker. The marshmallows were like those pink, like star marshmallows, not oh, like the uh-huh. actual marshmallows. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I do agree with ham, though. Like, first you take the mallow. When the mallow's flaming, <laughs> you stick it on the graham. Like, I love a burnt marshmallow. I don't know how you like your yeah. marshmallows. Yep. No, nope. I like them burnt. They gotta be burnt, burnt. and crispy. Burnt and crispy tastes <laughs> like fire. But yeah, like you're eating straight charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like... And if you drop it in in the flame, you just pick it right up and stick it back on, <laughs> on the cracker. Yeah, we don't have time to be doing other marshmallows. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, that is just something. I don't know. I think again, a lot of people. I don't know, every time I make s'mores, which is not that often, but mm-hmm. anytime I do it, I have to say that speech. Yeah. But I mean, like you said, that scene is very iconic of childhood. Yeah. Movie. Even that one that one sentence where he's like, You're killing me, Smalls. Oh. Everyone uses that line for everything. If I you're forgot. frustrated with someone, like they automatically, you're killing me, Smalls. Like every even if you haven't seen the sandlot, I feel like people know that one line. Yeah, there's so many shirts that say, like, you're killing mm-hmm. me, Smalls. Oh, I forgot mm-hmm. that is the first time he says that in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's so serious when he says it, too. <laughs> oh, my God. These act. Okay, these kid <laughs> actors are brilliant. They're fantastic. And a lot of them have gone on to really great careers. They're so dramatic mm-hmm. in this movie, which is so funny because I'm just like, we probably were like that. I feel, Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, I feel like. Are probably like you're killing me, Nicole. Yeah, <laughs> we do that now. That's true. We do <laughs> in our in our adulthood. <laughs> that is very true. Um, but yeah, he says that. Ugh, just his eye rolls. He's like, ugh. <laughs> mm-hmm. like everyone who's listening couldn't see my eye roll. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it that that one line everybody knows it. Like it's just it's classic. It is a classic one. It. Should be on any list of 100 best, best movie quotes of all time. Yeah. But I also, did you get the impression when he was at that sleepover that that was his first sleepover? I got that impression. Oh. Like it seemed oh. like he was very new to that whole world of sleepovers. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't that's know. It, watching it this time around, that's that's the impression I got. I mean, he is kind of sitting there, like, with his, like, little sleeping bag. Yeah. Like, held to his chest. Like, oh, my God. What's mm-hmm. going on? That is very true. Because it that is actually very – Nicole, that's very cinematic analysis film of you. <laughs> From the non-film person. <laughs> because, no, because, like, if you think about the rest of the boys, like, you have um, Kenny DeDunez, played by Brandon Adams, who is in so many amazing kids' movies. We love him. <laughs> yes. Um, 
he is like fully sprawled, laying mm-hmm. out, hanging out. Um, Timmy or Tommy, still don't know which one is which. <laughs> He's like kind of lounging with his like bowling pin. Mm-hmm. You know, Ham is kind of like set up shop yep. with an open flame. Yeah. By the way, in a yeah. treehouse, brambly, yeah. dusty field. And he's using those cheap candles that I feel like are going to melt within like 20 seconds. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they did not burn down the treehouse. Mm-hmm. That's really, I never really thought about that if that mm-hmm. was his first sleepover. Mm-hmm. I hope not. I mean, in the beginning, he talks about having friends from where he moved from. Yeah. But I but just he's got also that only impression. in. He's also only in the fifth grade. True. I don't know when we started having sleepovers. Oh, it was younger than fifth grade. But we were having also, sleepovers first, second grade. But it was also like supervised at someone's house. Again, not in some random tree house. True. <laughs> That's my running theme. We're not sleeping Who's, outside. <laughs> yeah. This is Sandlot 2. Whose tree house is it? Is like my <laughs> sequel. Um, that is very good on him. I know I was very scared at my first sleepovers. Many mm-hmm. sleepovers. Mm-hmm. I don't think I was comfortable with sleeping over at somebody's house until like high school. Mm-hmm. And that's when they I kind of stop. Two, the first sleepovers, I remember going home in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I just couldn't to, make yeah. it. Yeah. And then once you get past that hump, then you, you never want to sleep at your own house. You just want to have a sleepover every day. <laughs> you don't know homesickness until you are seven years old at your best friend's house in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you feel physically ill. Mm hmm. You need to go home that bad. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope you had fun at the sleepover. I mean, they then go into, you know, sleepovers. You tell scary stories. You watch movies. You goof around. You, you know, play light as a feather, stiff as a board. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, but I, I remember that game. Oh, I mean, I think I only got somebody off the ground like one time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do think it's really interesting because that's when Squints tells the story of the beast. Mm-hmm. And that basically the, you know, Mr. Myrtle had a junkyard, which I'm also just like, there's a junkyard next to the sandlot now. What? Yeah. I really um, just think it's somebody's backyard that it's has just, a collection of cars. Yeah. It's just a rundown backyard. But mm-hmm. he tells the story about how Mr. Myrtle has a junkyard and thieves used to come into his junkyard and steal stuff. So he got this dog and he fed him literal sides of beef. <laughs> ribs bit of an exaggeration i'm sure (laughs) yeah well that's what i was gonna say that is exactly what i was going to say is that he says uh that he like gave him like sides of beef beef and then the beast grew huge like he's big enough to like tear apart like a a trailer home um and at one point all these thieves go missing so the police are like we have to have you chain up your dog Mm -hmm. and he asks the police how long do i have to chain him up and his grandpa was like, forever, forever. <laughs> <laughs> but Squint says it's afterwards. He says that the dog's been chained up for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And that's what caught me. Exactly what you said. The exaggeration. Do they not know how long dogs live? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the, the whole story, they just saw a big dog in the back of a, a junkyard protecting the property. Yeah. And they automatically assume this dog's like mean and vicious and gonna eat people yeah but then it makes me think that for everything that goes forward in the movie is the exaggeration of like you know like when um like you know when you tell your friends like you're like oh yeah man like i fell down this hill it was huge but then it's like the tiniest hill (laughs) yeah Yeah. so then when i see them going against the beast later in the movie i was like i mean it's he's huge he's like Mm -hmm. vicious and i'm like is that the kid exaggeration are we now seeing the kid exaggeration of what the beast was, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, like, did he really so. throw something across the thing or did he just go? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and I think the story evolved over time with everybody. Oh, yeah. It became I like mean, their town gossip and the story got more and more outrageous where yeah. dogs are eating full on metal pieces. Yeah. And children like, apparently. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's, or like even much. It even changes in the middle of the story. He's like, yeah, it added up to like 173 guys. (laughs) He can tell a story, though. That's for sure. Squince Palidorus is a storyteller. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Which also, sleepovers, that's exactly how they run. Or how I remember them running. 
yeah you watch movies or you're telling ghost stories or Mm -hmm. you know playing games truth or dare oh i don't even know if kids play that anymore but i mean those truths and those dares might be a little scary now a little more advanced (laughs) (laughs) i think we're like eat a packet of sugar i'll take a truth (laughs) now it's like jump off this hill yeah no um i mean interestingly enough i think yeah i was gonna go bad for this dog oh me too that was one of the things Mm -hmm. that i have so much empathy for this dog now before i was like that mean old beast Mm -hmm. he's such a sweet kind dog in the end especially when you see his face and you know he just wants to play he yes very much he just wants to play there's a moment where he grabs a ball and it literally just drops out of his mouth Mm -hmm. and that's when like him and benny kind of square off and i think he's just going after him because he wants to play Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah he's all but the other thing too is are these kids the only one that know about the beast because i feel like you know the kids that come in on that other team Mm, and they like challenge them but they don't seem like phased that there's a giant monster gorilla dog as benny says yeah behind the fence like are these the only kids that know about this dog because they they're the only ones that play on this field maybe i mean it is kind of technically their field but then no but then later on benny or small says in his voiceover as an adult that like benny's reputation grew after he pickled the beast true true so which i mean he already had a reputation of being a good ball player too yeah being real and fast. The, yeah like the that other team that comes in and challenges them they respected him already right off the bat everyone mm-hmm. else no let's talk about (laughs) let's talk about that scene because it's a good one when yeah another little league team comes in to the sandlot and confronts them Mm -hmm. basically trying to get benny on their team and being like you guys suck we want benny Mm -hmm. yeah um going back to what you were saying about how everything's so dramatic so dramatic this scene is yeah literally squints is like oh no everyone's throwing gloves benny grabs a bat (laughs) (laughs) like what is he gonna do with the bat did you catch the part where they're walking towards that other team and squints like throws his glove but he throws and hits timmy or tommy do you see it and he plays it off very well yeah he plays it completely well he throws it right and like hits like his upper like chest face he he does it so well he kind of catches it and then throws it to the ground oh, that is too funny but again so dramatic why are you throwing that so high yeah didn't need to but i also think it's funny because the guys coming in on their bikes are also like mm-hmm. like they're pedaling so yeah so hard that i'm like my dudes you're going like 20 yards yeah yeah <laughs> you're on solid grass like it's not <laughs> as hard as you think it is yeah um i feel like they're that um no shame but you know they're that Pop Warner team and hey, Sandlot yeah. is Boys and Girls Club YMCA. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. That that but, tracks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, tr- which also makes me wonder too, I did think, why is Benny not on, ooh, that makes me feel bad. Why is Benny not on a Little League team? I don't, Because I think he likes being with his friends. He could be. I mean, I know that feeling of, yeah, wanting to be on Pop Warner, but your parents don't have the money to do it because it is mm-hmm. expensive. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did think about that when I was watching. I was like, if you're a prodigy, like everybody calls you, why are you not on a team? You're just playing with these yeah. chuckleheads. Yeah. <laughs> um, we love the confrontation scene. We used to be able to recite it word for word. We did used to be able to. I cannot now, though. I think you might have been Ham and I might have been Chucklehead Little League Boy. What? Phillips? Phillips. Ooh, Philip. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm assuming that's his last name. Oh, probably. Yeah. When we used to reenact it, is that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, when we used to reenact it. Yeah, yeah. Which I watching it this time around, I don't remember some of those insults in there. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember pee drinking crap face, mm-hmm. and you eat your mama's Wheaties with. Oh no, wait, you eat your Wheaties with your mama's toe jam, and you like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Which then goes into something that I know we definitely want to talk about. The line of, you play Ugh. ball like a girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. So offensive. 
I mean, but as kids, I totally threw that at people. Like, <laughs> you're like a girl. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. You cry like a girl. Girls cry. Or like, <laughs> yeah, that is true. We weren't kind to our fellow ladies. We were not. No, we were not. Yeah, but, and that they act like that's the most horrific insult anyone could ever get, ever. Yeah. But. Which, in a dream mashup, then Gina Davis <laughs> walks in with her League of Their Own Peaches and is like, let's play. In their skirts. Um, yeah, in their skirts. <laughs> Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell just out there. Um, oh. But yeah, they do seem very offended by that. And I think now watching it, I was like, that is something a lot of movies did mm -hmm. back in the day. A lot of mm -hmm. movies made the girls feel inferior. Um, and I even thought about it more where it was like, there's not a lot of girl child movies out there, female mm -hmm. child movies. Yeah. Like, again, if there is, it's something where it is a Mighty Duck situation, Big Green, where there's like one or two girls. Yeah. And in those, they always have a girl that is hands down better than the guys. Yeah. Like they would never have a girl come in where she needs to learn the sport. Like no. she already knows. And Julie she, the cat. she's better than all. Yeah. She's better than all the guys on the team. Oh, I mean, this is not the one to talk about it, but the fact that Julie the cat had to even compete with Goldberg, mm -hmm. she should have been number one. Yeah. But then yeah. this movie literally had no female characters. They they had the mom mm -hmm. and they had Wendy Peppermore. Wendy. Yep. You know, and like there's another line too where um, Small says when his mom is explaining about the baseball that's signed by Babe Ruth who Babe Ruth was, there the voiceover comes in and is like, even my mom, a grown-up mm -hmm. girl, knew who Babe Ruth was. Yeah. Yeah. You like know, girls don't know sports. Like girls don't do sports. Or also that girls don't do sports, but they're they're bad at sports or they don't care about sports. They're not into mm -hmm. sports. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know how to say it in any other word than that. Although, that growing up, I don't feel like we experienced this. Like, Not I was always picked first for kickball. Because we were big. Always. <laughs> <laughs> because people thought our size meant athletic prowess. In some sports, it did translate that way. True. <laughs> Others, not so much. <laughs> True. But I'm saying, like, uh. in, the ter in terms of, like, watching movies, I cannot tell you, or maybe I should say in this age range, I cannot tell you a movie that focuses on just a group of girls true and if it is it's much later it's now and then it's clueless it's the craft it's not, it's not a physical it's more emotional yeah and it's also um in the age where like 16 17 you're like older you're not like these kids who were like 12 and 13 when i think mm -hmm. actually a lot of girls are going through a lot of changes in their life you know, like that could be an amazing story. And yet for some reason they didn't tell them. I mean, I think growing up, I don't think I never noticed that we weren't watching movies starring girls, females. I didn't, I didn't I don't know why I just said girls, females, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we noticed. I don't even think we translated that into our own lives. Cause like saying that we saw a group of guys, but we still felt like that was our summer. Yeah. Even though it was a group of boys. Like we I think it's because we saw kids. Experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I think as kids, we saw kids. We saw peers. As adults, mm -hmm. we now want to know where the girl's at. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they tried to do that other Sandlot sequel with the girls. <sighs> That's a whole nother story. Yeah. But that one is not bad because it's girls. It's bad because it's a bad movie. Yes. Yes. <laughs> let's just yes. Let's yeah. clarify. Yes. Clarify that. But, I mean, I guess – Sticking with this one and talking about how they treat girls, I was surprised. We're going back in the film a little bit. The pool scene. Mm -hmm. And I even texted you when I rewatched it. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Like, what? How old is Wendy supposed to be? That's what I want to know. I is she supposed to be in high school? She's got to be like 16, 17. I mean, Squince has been coming here every summer. She's up there yeah. lotioning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally the first line is like, yeah, it's too hot to play baseball. So the mm -hmm. boys decide to go to the pool and Benny's like, okay, we'll go to the pool. But then Small says in a voiceover, the only reason why he decided to go to the pool is because none of them had seen Playboy yet. 
and going to the pool was the closest they'd ever come. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, come to. Sorry, that sounded dirty. The closest they've ever come. The closest <laughs> they'd ever be. It's a PG lady. show. Oh, I don't know how to get out of it now. Um, the like going to the pool. Wait, I have it written down because now I'm gonna see people gonna be like pervert. <laughs> oh, he says literally the line is none of us had ever seen a Playboy magazine, but we figured pool honeys was the next best thing. Mm -hmm. Like. What? boys will be boys that's all i can say boys will be boys or anybody attracted to ladies will be attracted to lady i don't know i'm yeah. not trying to go to the pool scoping on skinny boys and teach no t-shirts on yeah yeah it was i i, I never caught that line before i caught it I think, this time yeah yeah once you pointed it out this time i heard it yeah because then it's like i don't know like yeah you're right it's just like how old is Wendy supposed to be? Because they're all just like creeping on her. Yep. And then, and then she has scenes where she kind of like flirts with Squints a little bit. Well, she does flirt with Squints a little bit. And I also thought it was interesting because when she is giving mouth to mouth to Squints and he starts like macking on her, when she mm -hmm. comes up, she goes, Mwah! and I'm like, that's a kissing uh, noise, Wendy. Huh. Interesting. They do get married later. Spoiler yes. alert. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Age is nothing but a number. Love is love. However, be legal. Be over 18. Yes, please. But yeah, there is, I don't know, maybe it's just, this is one of those instances where I'm like, oh, this was written by a man. Have you ever heard that before? Mm -mm. It's kind of like a thing where it's like in movies or books, it's like, this is such a male fantasy, like mm -hmm. the lifeguard, the sexy lifeguard. Makes she sense. saves me. We make out. Like, it's, yeah, makes sense. You know, like it is something where us girls are like, "Yeah, Wendy saved him," but then it turns creepy and almost kind of rapey. Yeah, because they're like, "What eight? No, they're like, <laughs> they're like, they're like in fifth, sixth grade. Okay, they're like ten, twelve, but still, but still, yeah, yeah, ten, twelve, making out with like a sixteen, seventeen year old mm -hmm. is not okay. Mm -hmm. But it, I think it is very again, boys who had never seen Playboy were going to see hot Wendy Peppercorn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which also Yaya calls her peppercorn, which I'm like, it's peppercorn? Yeah, yeah. And then they get kicked out of the pool and can't banned go for the rest of the summer. Yeah, banned from the pool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we did go backwards a little bit. That scene kind of leads into then the confrontation scene with the Pop Warner kids. And mm -hmm. after they beat them, they go celebrate at the Janky Carnival. The Janky <laughs> Carnival. <laughs> Uh, I, as a kid, never realized tobacco was bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got it so easily. Uh, yeah, and I, I also think that just ties into a baseball thing, too. Yeah. Well, the, he like, also says all the, don't they say, like, all the big guys chew it or something? Yeah, all the pros do it. Yeah, all the pros do it. Gives you energy. <laughs> yeah. What Let's said. dip! Let's yeah. dip! Is what they say. And then they get uh, on the rides. With all that chew in their mouth, which is Ooh, ballsy. I mean, yeah, yeah. Although I must say, this just side note, um, their carnival rides look much more sturdy than the carnival rides nowadays. I feel like. Ooh, that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's an iconic scene from that movie too. It is a I mean, with a uh, mm -hmm. tequila. Da -dun -dun -dun. Yeah. Love it. I love yeah. also too. I love you dearly, but it reminds me of you when Ham comes off and he just like, uh, he burps. Oh, he's, he's like, that feels better. <laughs> Clearly that's not the classy side of me. No, no. But this, I think this scene kind of is the shift in this movie um, where it goes from like, we're having a fun summer to like, this is the specific adventure we're about to go on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they're back at Which the same actually line. takes a while to get to. It does. It does take a while to get to it. And it actually is the next uh, kind of few scenes are very short together. Like it is mm -hmm. fast. Um, basically, they're at the Sandlot again. Shocker. And they're playing a game. And Benny busts the guts out of a ball. Mm -hmm. Which he basically, I don't know if anybody knows that. I've never heard that term anywhere else. He basically hits the ball so hard that it comes out, like the inside of the ball comes out of the outside of the ball. Yes. 
um, which I think Miss Buthers might have Myth Buthers might have done an episode on that. I cannot remember though. Hmm. I love that show. Um, but because of that, they don't have another ball to play with. Mm-hmm. But Small says, "Oh, I got a ball," and they're mm-hmm. like, "Okay, go home and get it." We find out that the ball is his stepdad's ball that is signed by Babe Ruth. Yep. We've already established Smalls has no idea about baseball. He doesn't know who Babe Ruth is. He takes the ball. Here's where we see Benny play another position. (laughs) Sure. He tells Smalls, it's your ball. You're up. Mm -hmm. And he hits a homer over the fence. Which, by the way, all of a sudden Smalls can play baseball now. Oh, yes. Smalls can play baseball literally after the first one that he did with like a chopping motion. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I also thought it was funny because they were just mad because Benny busted the guts, but they were cool with Smalls hitting a homer. Mm -hmm. You still can't play baseball, boys. You got to find another ball. (laughs) Um, But so the ball goes over the fence to where the beast is. We already Mm -hmm. know they can't get the ball because the beast is there. And Smalls finally tells them, like, you don't understand. That ball was my dad's. It was signed by somebody. And they're like, who? And he's like, Babe Ruth. And they're just like, you're dead where you stand. Or what does he Mm -hmm. say? Dead as a doornail small. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first he doesn't make the connection. He thinks it's signed by a lady. Baby Baby Ruthie? Ruthie? (laughs) That's what he says. (laughs) Yeah. And then makes the distinction after they taunt him a little bit that this is Babe Ruth. Yeah. He's... He's the guy that they've been talking about. He's the guy that they're trying mm-hmm. to emulate. Um, but then it leads into them thinking of these amazing ideas of how to get this ball back. They like start very rudimentary. Pot in a, a pan stick. or like a stick yeah. in a pot. We're just going to drag it through. Then they mm-hmm. like hook up vacuums and do a little suction thing. Mm-hmm. Then they do the erector set and make like a a ball thing. They put, yeah, yeah. Hovering a little over sling. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the ideas are so smart. They're so smart. Way smarter than I could have ever thought of at that age. Yeah. I feel like we would we would have hit those first two and then that's about it. We'd try a stick. We'd, we maybe put a pan on the end of a stick and try that one. Yeah. You also think that we would do the vacuums? No, not the vacuums. Oh, no. No. I would no, sacrifice no our little brother. <laughs> oh, the little slingshot thing? Or just a full on hop over the fence and get it? Hmm. I'm trying to think about now because I don't think we could have lifted him, hoisted him up and over. But I feel like yeah. Dominic needs to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be the one. But that's what I was trying to think. Like, what now as an adult, what do you think you would have done? Like, could you come up with something to get the ball back? Other than just asking for it? Other than just asking for it. <laughs> I don't think my ideas would be as advanced as theirs. No. Like, they literally built Machinery. stuff to try to get this ball. Yeah, to try to get this ball out. I don't have that kind of imagination. Mm-mm. And I probably would have instinctively just tried to hop the fence. Yeah. And get it. And I would hop the fence, grab the ball, and throw it back over. Not None of them it. ever. Oh my gosh! Yes. None. Of, like when Yaya is seriously hanging, he has the ball the whole time. Yeah, and just throw it. it. Yes. Yes. He doesn't drop it until he's at the top. Throw it over, my dude. Yeah. Yep. And I feel like had they moved a little faster on all of their ideas, they probably would have got it. Like yeah, on that also, second one. Why is Squints like whispering? He's like, "Yeah, got it. Throw it back. Oh, Pull it up." Fire, fire, fire. Yeah. Why are you whispering? Like pipe. It's pinch and shut. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, why is he whispering? This is war. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Plus, I, just, I mean, they're making so much noise with what they're doing. So much noise. Which yeah. Mr. Myrtle says when they finally meet him, like, are you guys the ones making all this racket? Yeah. Which he never once went to check what's happening in his backyard. He's blind. <sighs> true. True. I mean, but you can hear stuff going on. That's true. Yeah. That was insensitive of me to say. I apologize. But <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things where they were – I I, I asked you this question and I don't have an answer either. I don't know what I would do, honestly, besides going and getting it. Yeah, definitely not as sophisticated as they were. Why didn't they sure. try to distract the beast with food though? That I would have thought of. Yes, yes. Throw over yeah. this side of beef Mr. Myrtle's been feeding them. Mm-hmm. 
That would have been a good one. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, though, they do stop and realize they're never going to get this ball back. Smalls is dead. (laughs) He's not dead. Smalls is in trouble. (laughs) Sorry. He's going to be grounded for life. Yeah, he's going to be grounded for life. And then Benny has a dream where Babe Ruth comes to him and basically tells him to pickle the beast, Mm -hmm. which is another baseball term where you have a runner that is stuck between the bases and the two basemen are throwing the ball back and forth and you have to outrun the ball to get there. Thank you, ESPN. Hire me. Um (laughs) That's not the – I don't think that's the right way. um, Which I did not know that term until this movie. Oh, 100%. And yeah. don't think I've ever heard it anywhere else. But basically, yeah. Babe Ruth tells him, you need to pickle the beast. So the next day, Benny the Jet with his PF flyers goes to the fence, hops over it, takes the ball. The beast, again, what we think now just wants to play. Mm-hmm. Which actually you out. can clearly see he wants to play. He just wants to play. At this point. he wants. He's a nice boy. He wants to mm-hmm. play. Um but basically Benny runs and the beast follows him and they then run for a good five minutes all through this town. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fun. I don't know as a friend, I would run after him. <laughs> Plus I'm not sure what they were going to do if they caught up to him. I don't know. The only thing that bothered me is like when they go through the party I'm just annoyed that Ham went back to like taste the cake that those guys are like the fat kid doesn't need to run back and taste the cake. Yeah. It's part of his character though. I know, but he's in a montage. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically they end up back, they go through town, they end up back at Mr. Myrtle's and the gate falls on the beast and mm-hmm. Smalls helps him out. And that's when we find out that, the beast is actually nice. He licks Small's face. Thank you. Shows them the rest of their balls that have come over the fence. That they can play for life now. Yes. And because mm-hmm. the fence is down, that's when they decide to knock on Mr. Myrtle's door. And the goat comes out. Mm-hmm. James Earl Jones. I love his voice. I love his voice. And he just seems like such a sweet person, which was perfect he here. Because he another does. exaggeration from that flashback He's talking about how, like, Mr. Myrtle fed a kid Mm -hmm. to the beast, and he's the nicest man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, he literally invites them inside his home and says, like, oh, you're – he tells Smalls you're dead where you stand. Yeah. Yeah. Because he could sense that. Yeah. He's Mm -hmm. He is blind. He could sense that Smalls was in trouble. Uh, He was friends with Babe Ruth. Mm -hmm. He played baseball. Um. And he offers him a ball in exchange for this ball. He offers him a ball signed by the 1927 Yankees, Mm -hmm. which I'm assuming is huge. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. We're not the ones to ask. (laughs) We're not the ones to ask. But basically he's saying like, again, I will help you kid, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that is so cool that it just goes against everything that this town has thought about Mr. Myrtle. Yeah. What the kids thought about Mr. Myrtle. Yeah. Um, but what And you I, could tell he just wanted to talk. Like yeah. he was so happy that someone from the community actually came into his house oh, to talk to him. Don't say that. That makes me feel sad. But that's that's his like character. That's what you get. The town was kind of, you know, against him, shunned him away. And no, now no, you got no, these no, kids no. coming in. <laughs> no. <and laughs> that's too much. To baseball. That's too much. I don't think it was the- baseball. I don't think the town Mm. shunned him, Nicole. You know what I mean. The kids thought he was scary. (laughs) Yes. But what made me really sad thinking about him, well, now in addition to what you just told me, (laughs) did he play in the Negro League? That's what I I thought about this time around. Never would have thought about it. He has so many pictures of black, all black baseball teams. He did Mm -hmm. play with Babe Ruth. Mm-hmm. I did look it up. The Major League Baseball was integrated in 1947. Mm-hmm. He has a ball from 1927. Mm-hmm. So he must have been in the major leagues when it was integrated. But I'm also like yeah. that as an adult now. I was like, I never, I never thought about it. We are mixed. Yeah. Our dad mm-hmm. is black. Mom's white. So like for me to now think about that as an adult, kind of, it got me. Yeah. Yeah. It got me this time around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like not only did this man like, you know 
his love of the game, he still played in a segregated league, but then Mm -hmm. when he finally got his dream, he gets hit in the head with the ball and it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) It's very sad. I didn't like that. It's home. It's home for sure. Yeah, it's home. Which, like you said, you you don't realize that as watching that as a kid. mm Mm-mm. It's never mentioned, but yeah. now as an adult, knowing what I know mm-hmm. about history, I can see it in the set decoration. I can see it in mm-hmm. how they put up his house, the props and everything. I can see that. And yeah. I think that's that's unfortunate that that happened to him, but it's also really cool that this production really cared to make that be known. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They could have just been like, yeah, he played with Babe Ruth, but to not have the history on the walls, I think would have really lost something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what a cameo, James Earl Jones. Yes, like, he's good in everything. He's fantastic in everything. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that kind of brings us towards the end of the movie, where we then find out, you know, the beast is nice. The boys are fine. They got the ball. They mm-hmm. got both balls. Um. A lot of things can be taken out as clips and out of context in this one. Uh. But <laughs> then they do this like ending where it's like here's what happened to all the kids as they left yeah Mm -hmm. and this is what got me everyone sounds timmy tommy they made the mini mall yeah yeah bungee jumping kenny de nunez is coaching his kids little league team the heaters the heaters (laughs) ham porter is a wrestler Mm -hmm. bertram weeks disappeared he just gets lost (laughs) he got got really into the (laughs) really into the 60s and nobody ever saw him after that that is a quote y'all from the movie what does that mean yeah why was that included in a child's movie mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> like it's so much good news and then it's just like bertram well bertram got really into the 60s yeah i don't know it was <laughs> for me it was like after figuring out James Earl Jones was in the Negro League and then hearing Bertram just disappears was like, oh, uh. yeah, yeah. It was makes a little, much. yeah, yeah. But hey, Smalls ends up being a broadcaster for the Dodgers mm-hmm. and Benny the Jet ends up being an amazing baseball player. Yeah. Which I like how they continue to their friendship once they got older. And you got to see that. Yeah. And fun fact, Benny the Jet as an older man playing baseball for the Dodgers is actually played by Mike Vitar's older brother, Pablo Hmm. in real life. Hmm. So good face match. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Plausible. (laughs) It fits. Um, Yeah. But. (laughs) And he still has his hat. Oh, the small, the hat that's that's uh, about to fall apart. And yeah. Yeah. That has the biggest bill (laughs) in the world. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is the Sandlot, y'all. If you have not seen the movie, we highly recommend going through. Yes, Let absolutely. us know your thoughts that you're watching it now as an adult for the first time, for the seventeenth time, for the hundredth time. Mm-hmm. Let us know your thoughts mm-hmm. in the comments. Um, but at the end of every podcast, we're going to ask this question. So Nicole, I'm going to ask you now: the Sandlot. Mm-hmm. Do we think it holds up, or do we think it's just nostalgia? Oh, definitely holds up all day long. Probably always will. Absolutely. No question. I have watched that movie a thousand times as an adult too. And what's funny is I can actually watch that movie now and just have it playing in the background Mm -hmm. and just hearing it. I know what scenes are playing and I can picture it. Like I don't actually have to sit down and watch the movie. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, It's just, it's a feel good childhood movie like it's fun it's yeah yeah it's a good time yeah definitely holds up for sure i agree it holds up treat your ladies better (laughs) yeah yeah treat the girls better in the next one but it holds up yeah we love that movie we'd appreciate it (laughs) yeah just do better for the ladies of the next generation but it holds up agreed oh for sure for sure yeah but definitely thanks thanks for chatting with me sister yeah, no problem. We actually do this all the time. Yeah, we're just now doing it for you guys. People. Yeah, <laughs> we do this all the time. We're just recording we're it now. Movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely, um, like Brittany said, 
comment down below if you have not seen this movie and you're watching it for the first time let us know what you think about it comment down below if you have seen this movie if you agree or disagree on anything we've said um anything that we didn't talk about um that you want to interject and let us know that you know stands out um to you about this movie um, feel free to definitely comment. We appreciate it. And next week, we are going to be doing, staying with that sports childhood theme movies, we are going to be doing The Mighty Ducks, um, which is another classic that we grew up with. So Mighty Ducks, we encourage you to watch that movie this week so you can join us next week and we can chat about it together. Let us know your thoughts. The other thing too, let us know if there's movies that you grew up on that you want us to watch um and talk about comment down below as well and yeah we just really appreciate you coming and listening to our sister ramble that we do every day sister ramble <laughs> our sister ramble <laughs> sister. Um, but yes yeah. definitely um yeah i think it was a great chat i think it was a great chat i mean yeah thanks for being here with us like comment subscribe Send it to your friends. We are also yeah. on Instagram at movie night underscore podcast. Thanks for being here, guys. I mean, I want to say that's a wrap on the Sandlot. Yes, I'm back next is. week for Mighty Ducks. Yes, we will be here. We hope you will be here too. Yeah. Have a good movie night, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>